or people more quickly? Yes, because now it's the, 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 an inconvenient truth. It's, it's a hit movie and, and a best-selling book, but actually it's, it's, as you say, a slideshow. And a slideshow, just the word could make you yawn. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it sounds well, boring. Um, and now uh, the book is uh, published in Norwegian uh, today uh, and uh, by Versal. And uh, the <laughs> you're right, though. When I was first uh, approached with the idea of making the slideshow into a movie, I thought it was a terrible idea. I didn't think a slideshow could be made into a movie. But uh, there are some talented people in Hollywood who know what they're doing. And I'm, I'm so glad that uh, they, they talked me into letting them make the movie. And I think they did a good job. I'm a little biased, but I think they did a great job. And, and the film went quite well also in America. Uh, but yes, yes. Has, do you know if George Bush has seen it yet? Or has <laughs> well, he done that? He, uh, he said that he would not uh, see it, but, but that's why I wrote the book. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's say you, had, you could lend his ear for, yeah. for a minute. Yeah. How would you describe to him the essence of the climate crisis, as you call it? Well, I, I have uh, asked for the chance to uh, present the slideshow or to bring the message in whatever way uh, he would hear it. Uh, and I would start by saying that this is uh, far beyond politics. It's not a political issue at all. It's, it, it's really a moral issue because it has to do with our responsibility to our children and our grandchildren and all who come after us. And um, we've, we have multiplied by four times the population of our planet in less than 100 years. And population is stabilizing of its own accord, but we, we are now in a very different relationship to the planet. And even more important than the growth in our numbers is that the technologies we use now are thousands of times more powerful than the ones our grandparents had available to them. And we are now capable of really doing uh, incredible damage unless we're very careful to the, the biosphere of the Earth, the ecological system of the Earth. And the most vulnerable part of it is the atmosphere. It's very small, actually. It's uh, an illusion to think the sky is so limitless and big. It's actually, uh, there, it's only a few kilometers to the top of the sky. And uh, the engines of our civilization are now f filling that small space with global warming pollution, principally CO2, and uh, we're putting 70 million tons every day into it as if it were an open sewer. And the responsibility we have to one another, and as I said, most of all to our children and grandchildren, should lead us to urgently change the way we are pursuing uh, our economic activity. And, and the good news is we can become much more efficient and competitive and productive and raise our standards of living in the right way as we cut down on all this pollution. But, but if you were now to tell this to George Bush mm. or any of your opponents, do you think they would regard you as one of those guys you know on the New York street with a sign saying the end is near? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I, sometimes I, I, I feel as if uh, that's the way some people see me. I remember, <laughs> I remember during, back during the days of the nuclear arms race, there were all uh, kinds of cartoons of uh, men with long white beards carrying signs, the world is about to end. And <laughs> I, I never thought that I would be seen in any way like that. <laughs> and I don't believe that. I, 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 I think that I'm very hopeful and optimistic, but my optimism is based on the assumption that enough people will hear the truth of what our situation is and will decide to make uh, to, to make changes and to act. And, and you get support from the, the IPCC report for the yes, UN. Yes, yes. But, but also, you, you go even further. Some would say you, you paint an even darker picture than, than this report does. Uh, you know, I think that the view that I uh, present uh, is based on the best uh, science available. And there are scientists, very respected scientists, I, James Lovelock is one who comes to mind who have a much darker view than do I. There are some who, who believe that there's no way we'll respond in time. I, I'm convinced that we also will there, respond in time. Also, there are scientists on the other side. Most, most scientists no, would agree no, that this is, this is man-made to some extent. 
but but there are scientists that, uh, uh, that... not not to some extent the the uh, first of all the you said the ipcc some mm -hmm. people may not know that that is the the international group called the intergovernmental panel on mm -hmm. climate change and it's made up of thousands of scientists who are the very best experts in their respective fields and but they're, just they're, uh, they're, they, they disagree to some extent. No, they were unanimous. They were unanimous yes, on the IPCC report. Yes, and, and but some would disagree fourth... with you. Yes, don't you but, think? but but the mainstream consensus is so strong. It's rare to have a consensus as strong as this one. And when the you... the world's I'm sorry. I'm go so, ahead. sorry. <laughs> Do you find it hard to to choose the, which scientist to, to listen to? I mean, I, whom to trust? The scientific process has a way of uh, identifying among the scientists themselves who they feel are the most respected experts in each field. And uh, climate science is a very interesting field of science because it requires the integration of expertise from different fields. And some of those who are now most respected in climate science are the computer modelers who have found ways to integrate all of the different fields. James Hansen at NASA, for example, is one of the